communication is a large part of our current society. Everybody's always gabbing on their cell phone and uh, sending information across the Atlantic and the Pacific via satellites and through fiber optic cables. And at bottom, communication and how many bits per second that we can send from one place to another is governed by the laws of physics. In particular, the laws of quantum mechanics. Because when we send information through the air via radio waves or through fiber optic cables via light or by bouncing laser beams off of satellite or for that matter, simply by speaking and having information go through the vibrations of the air, that information is being conveyed by elementary particles in physics called bosons. Photons are particles of light, phonons are particles of sound, and the laws that govern how much information you can cram into a fiber optic cable or get into your cell phone antenna for that matter, these laws are all governed by the laws of quantum mechanics. In fact, these laws of quantum mechanics that govern communication actually stem from the 19th century or rather from 1900 when Max Planck began investigating the laws of heat transfer. Planck was interested in the problem of how much energy and entropy could be radiated out of a hot body. A body, uh, it's called a black body because black bodies absorb and emit light at all frequencies. So a black wood burning stove, it looks black and when you heat it up it starts to glow red and if you heat it up even further, and I don't recommend this by the way, it will glow white because it's emitting light of all frequencies. And when you do the calculation using Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism about how much energy and entropy or heat could be emitted by a black body, you get an answer which is wrong. In fact, you get the answer infinity. So if you have a black body at temperature you know, T, which is like room temperature, it should be emitting an infinite amount of energy and heat. And that's simply not the case. I mean, it would be a very efficient way to heat your room, but I mean, it might heat it a little too fast, if you know what I mean. So Planck actually invented quantum theory to limit the amount of energy and heat that could be radiated out by these black bodies. And he said, well, what happens if energy is quantized, so if it comes in little chunks? These chunks are, are of light or electromagnetic energy are now what we call photons, particles of light. But Planck said, if these energies are quantized, if they come in chunks, then I can redo the calculation for how much energy and heat are emitted by a hot body and he got exactly the right answer. He did this calculation, said energy is quantized. He said, here's my prediction for the curve of the rate of heat emission at a particular temperature. Here's the experimental part. Hmm, hmm, they're exactly the same. This was the origins of the theory of quantum mechanics. What does heat transfer have to do with communication? Well, in fact, Communication is the transfer of information from one place to another. And information is measured in terms of bits. A bit is just the smallest chunk of information. You know, two possibilities, yes, no, true, false, photon here, no photon there. Um, a bit of information is transferred by, say, like, hey, if I send no photon is, is a zero, photon is one, then if no photon shows up in this time period, my bit is zero. If a photon shows up, the bit is one. So where does the theory of information come from? Well, actually, uh, in the mid 20th century, Claude Shannon of um, uh, AT&T Bell Labs and subsequently at MIT developed what's called the mathematical theory of communication. And he came up with a bunch of mathematical formulas for measuring the number of bits of information that, for instance, could be sent down a communication channel. And when he went to the great physicist John von Neumann and and asked him, what should I call this quantity? Uh, von Neumann said, oh, you should call that entropy because that's what Boltzmann called it. And Shannon said, huh? Well, actually, I, don't, I wasn't there, so I don't know what Shannon said. <laughs> but Shannon said, what, what entropy? And von Neumann said, yes, entropy is the amount of information that exists in the vibrations of molecules and the wiggling up and down of the electromagnetic field. 
Entropy is a kind of a measure of the randomness of the behavior of physical systems. But really, it's the number of bits of information that are needed to describe how atoms and the electromagnetic field are wiggling up and down at random. When Planck was calculating, using his newly minted laws of quantum mechanics, how much heat and entropy could be transferred by radiation from a hot black body, he was coming up with the rate at which information can be transferred from this body. So the rate at which heat is coming off of the body and the equations that govern it actually also govern the rate at which we can send information down fiber optic cables or through the air either by microwaves, by light, or for that matter by sound. Just in the same way that quantum mechanics has its origins in coming up with Planck's black body law, and Planck's black body law in turn governs how much information we can send on fiber optic cables. In the more recent years, we can turn the tide, we can turn the method around. So we can use the physics of communication, the physics of information processing, how we build computers that operate at the quantum mechanical scale, how we send in uh, bits of information on individual photons. We can use this to attack problems of heat transfer again. But now problems of heat transfer at very, very tiny scales. My colleagues and I for years have been developing the physics of computation, the laws of quantum mechanics that govern how bits flip and how you process information at the scale of atoms and elementary particles. But because this physics governs computation, it also then governs heat transfer. You know, Planck came up with quantum mechanics to describe heat transfer. The laws of quantum mechanics describe communication and information processing. And now, with our newly found laws of how information gets processed at the very small scale, we can go back and look at how heat gets transferred at very, very tiny scales. So we can imagine, for instance, an experiment, and this is not an imaginary experiment, it's a real experiment performed by my colleague Gang Chen down the hall, in which you take a tiny sphere that's only a few tens of nanometers in diameter, so it's a few uh, hundreds of atoms across, and you move it to within a few atoms lengths of a solid surface, and you can measure how much heat flows between the surface and the sphere, so-called nanoscale heat transfer, because it's heat transfer that's taking place at the scale of nanometers, billionths of a meter. Now, when you look at these experiments, there are strange and weird anomalies, funny things that happen that you wouldn't predict at all. The most remarkable and obvious thing is that Planck's law of energy transfer from hot black bodies breaks down at this scale. And once you get very close to an object, the amount of heat transfer that you can get between these two objects is hundreds or thousands or even millions of times higher than the amount of heat transfer that Planck would have predicted. So how can we understand this by using the physics of computation? Well, I mean, if you think of the atoms wiggling up and down within this you know, nanosphere and within the surface as being bits that are flipping rapidly, and when they get very close to each other, then you can have direct interactions between these flipping bits, as opposed to a far distant communication where you're communicating over long distances and you have to send a photon from here to there. Here, you don't actually have to have a photon that's sent from you know, this atom wiggling over here to this atom over here. You can have what's called a virtual photon, which comes from the direct interaction of these atoms. Now, when these atoms interact directly, then you can have you know, this wiggle over here transfer itself to this wiggle over here, so you can get transformation of heat energy and information at a much faster rate than you can if you are actually going to send light and heat through the air. So uh, uh, in order to understand how heat transfer works, we need to understand the physics of communication. But to understand the physics of communication, we need to understand how heat transfer works. A hundred years ago, Planck developed the first laws of quantum mechanics to understand heat transfer. Then in, in the last 20 years or so, my colleagues and I have taken this to understand the physical limits to communication down, for instance, fiber optic cables and through the air. And now we're turning the tables and we're using our newfound understanding of how information gets processed and transferred at the most microscopic scale to develop new laws and theories of how to transfer heat at the nanoscale. So where is all this leading? Well, 
Actually, if you look at our fiber optic cables and our communications devices, they are jammed full of bits. And we're rapidly approaching the ultimate limits to what the laws of physics allow in order to have communication at the most microscopic and the fastest possible levels. So what we're aiming for is to come up with the theories of how much information we can send on these cables and to come up with physical methods for attaining them by using funky and wacky quantum mechanical states to send very large amounts of information down these cables. At the same time, since the world is also facing not only a communications and computation glut and bottleneck, we're definitely in the midst of a global energy crisis. Uh, it's really paramount that we come up with better ways and more efficient ways to transfer and transport and transform energy by applying the fundamental physics of computation to problems of solar cells, to problems of microscopic motors, to problems of even of transportation and of fuel cells. We hope to make novel devices that use the laws of quantum mechanics that will transfer and process energy in the most efficient way allowed by the laws of physics.